Africa is at the front line of climate change. The Lake Chad Basin covers almost 8% of the continent. It supports tens of millions of people. The UN says it has shrunk by 90% since the 1960s because of drought driven by climate change. The resulting competition for resources has caused poverty and conflict. Over 10 million people are dependent on humanitarian assistance. 27-year-old Oladosu Adenike is a prominent campaigner on climate change in Africa. She started the Fridays for Future campaign in Nigeria, joining the global movement launched by climate activist Greta Thunberg in 2018. The peace and stability in this region, in the Lake Chad region, the Sahel, it depends on when we are able to restore the lake and able to see that people get sustainable livelihoods for them not to be vulnerable to join armed group of people. And this will likewise, likewise improve democracy in the region. Adenike is an official Nigerian youth delegate at the COP26 summit and says she is frustrated by the slow progress. We are still in the talking phase. We have not yet transited into the action phase, which is needed right now, this moment, and not postponing it into the future, because that is the most dangerous thing you can do right now, because delay now is now a denial of the climate change crisis. Kaluki Paul Mutuku is a youth delegate for Kenya. Like Adenike, he's another prominent young voice in the fight against climate change in Africa. We are constantly in the fear of losing our family members, losing our communities because the, uh, the climate is dry, it's, it's worsening by the day, there are droughts, there is extreme rainfall and communities cannot bear with it. Mutuku says climate change driven disasters like the locust plague of 2019 are becoming more common in his home country. He says that climate finance, the money that rich countries have agreed to pay to poorer nations to help them adapt to climate change and decarbonize their economies, is the most vital outcome of COP26. Their 2009 pledge to pay $100 billion a year still has not been met. We cannot afford to lose hope and as long as young people, grassroots and our frontline communities are leading the decade of change, then we are in the right trajectory. For me, any delayed financing is a shame to leaders. For young activists from around the world, it has been a long journey to COP26 in every sense. They say they will continue to fight for climate justice long after they return home. Henry Ridgewell for VUA News at the COP26 Summit in Glasgow, Scotland.